From the center of the universe, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, this is the SDM Show with your host, Rob Cairns. The SDM Show focuses on business, life, productivity, digital marketing, WordPress, and more. Sit back, relax, grab your favorite drink, and enjoy the show. Here is Rob. Hey, everybody. Rob Cairns here. I'm the founder, CEO, and chief creator of Amazing Ideas at Stunning Digital Marketing. I am pleased to announce that Stunning Digital Marketing is a media partner for the Adoram Summit. And I will also be joining a panel that talks about using community to build your agency. Such an amazing topic. In today's podcast, I have the Adoram Summit founder, Vito Peleg, with me. And we're going to talk about all things about the summit. You really don't want to miss this chat or miss the summit itself. Grab a drink, sit back, relax, enjoy the show. This episode of the STM show is sponsored by Stunning Digital Marketing, the agency to handle all your WordPress website security needs. Go on over to stunningdigitalmarketing.com and find out how we can help you secure your website so you no longer have an issue with backups, being hacked, or your website being compromised. That's stunningdigitalmarketing.com. Hey, everybody. Rob Cairns here. And today, my guest is a bit of a rock star in one way or the other, and that's the one, the only, Vito Peleg for return engagement. How are you, Vito? Very good. It's good to be back, Rob. Thanks for having me. Oh, it was a pleasure. So we're just going to jump in. Today, I thought we'd talk about the Adoram Summit, and this is one you've run every year, and we're back at it again. So what are the basic details around the summit that people need to know? Uh, well, the summit is actually the largest event in our space, in the web agency space as well, the WordPress space that we bring back every year. This is going to be the fourth round and uh, looks like it's going to be the largest and, uh, and, and the most exciting one even for us because we have some really cool things planned out for this coming year. Yeah, and it will be. Um, I've had the pleasure, again, we were saying in the uh, pre-show that, again, I've become a media partner, which I love because I get to support you you and the summit and everything you do. And I'm also uh, speaking on one of the panels. So I'm, again, this year, so I'm looking forward to that. I've And I love panels because you get such a, a diverse opinion depending on who the panelists are. Right, Vito? I agree. And this is actually the first time. Well, there has been a couple of uh, panels throughout the years, literally two of them uh, over the past three years um, across different events. But this time we're really doubling down on this. Uh, We want to create some some uh, or bring an additional format that is a little more engaging than, uh, you know, the PowerPoint type of uh, presentations. And panels are amazing for that. And it also gives us the ability to bring in um, extremely uh, um, busy people into events that usually they don't really uh, engage with, if you will. And they're not, they're not going to do all the work of putting up, putting together like a presentation, but bringing people into a, a panel is a lot easier uh, to bring high profile folks that will share their knowledge and their thoughts with the future with the community. You know, it's funny. We, we talk about uh, PowerPoint presentations and I think you can make a PowerPoint presentation in person engaging, uh, depending on how the speaker runs their presentation. But online, that's really hard to do sometimes. So I think it's just because of the nature of the medium we're using, it's a little harder. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, uh, definitely. You need a little more skills or it's a bit of a different skill set to make sure that it is engaging in that sense. But uh, to kind of uh, negate that or bridge this gap, uh, we have our beloved hosts that are uh, with us for now the third year in a row uh, that uh, jump in and bring in some uh, some more uh, lively action from the chats and from uh, the people that are engaging in the other uh, networking areas of the summit so that uh, the session itself is not just one person speaking uh, outwards. It's more of a discussion in a lot of cases. Yeah, and those two lovely hosts are the one, the only, Andrew Palmer and Stephanie Hudson. 
right? Correct. That's correct. Yes. And the other thing I've heard you've done this year, because a little birdie told me, I do have my spies out there, is you have a bigger team putting together the Adirom Summit this year, don't you? That's true. Um, so the company has grown since the since last year. We um, the team has more than doubled its in size since uh, the last event, uh, and um, and we're kind of taking that responsibility of bringing a high quality, um, well organized, and even so even well funded event into our space, uh, and. With that, we're trying to unlock a new level of scale. It's already, um, you know, uh, three times larger than the next runner-up, but uh, still, there's a long way to go. In my mind, that was something that I also talked to a lot of uh, folks on the WordPress in the WordPress space specifically. Um, I believe that WordCamps, or speci- specifically WordCamp Europe or WordCamp US, they should be like 10, 20, 30,000 people events, especially with WordPress powering half of the internet. Uh, but it's very hard to do when uh, the people that are doing this, they're doing an amazing job, but they're still volunteers. And so the knowledge doesn't uh, always carry from one year to the next. And uh, it's very hard to create sustainable growth over time. And consistency and growth over time is really what makes things uh, tick for those larger events that you see out there. And so um, now for the fourth year, we find ourselves in the position to actually make that happen for the community uh, through the Web Agency Summit. Yeah, I, I agree. And, you know, anybody who's attended, I've attended every one. Last year was the first time I got involved and did a talk. And as typically goes for me, I get a talk, and um, what happens? I lose my internet connection just as the talk right. started. <laughs> and uh, I have to tell you, it's happened before. And Andrew and uh, our mutual friend Todd Jones did a good job on recovering for a couple minutes and dealing with my my uh, issues, but just my luck. And uh, <laughs> well, I think it's one of the exciting things about uh, about the event uh, since uh, most online events nowadays they're basically like a, a set of recorded sessions one after the next. Yep. Uh, but uh, we made it a principle from from the first event that we wanted everything to be live. And so uh, with it, you get the benefits, which is a lot more engagement and uh, really sense of closeness to the speakers and the panelists. Uh, but on the other hand, yes, you do, some, you do get some of these things uh, now and then. Fortunately, most of the speakers uh, uh, bounce back really fast, the same as you did, Rob. Yeah, and and it's fun, and it's funny because we we both have a mutual friend, Nathan Wrigley, who does yes. this week in WordPress on Monday mornings live. We've both been on with him multiple times over the years, and yes. and you know I've never had a problem with my connection with Nathan to this. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Um, so let's jump into a big announcement you made this morning. I was reading Twitter about an hour before, and I commented to you, I guess we have now more stuff to talk about. And you sort of tweeted out that um, you've managed to get some big players involved. Who are they and how are they getting involved? So um, one of the one of the core principles of this year is to expand beyond the group of folks that uh, we know and love from our space that uh, often appear in many of those uh, events, uh, myself included, you included, Rob, and uh, there's a there's a there's a few other uh, high quality folks that uh, that join these events, and uh, we're very grateful for them for their involvement. But I did want to make sure that this year we're expanding a little bit beyond. And also to try and bring that concept of uh, web agencies as a whole, uh, trying to look at not only the WordPress space, but the web building uh, space uh, generally and see who are are the other companies and players that should be included in these discussions. Instead of it being an internal discussion, it should be um, a very much broader, more inclusive discussion across the entire creators of the web. And so uh, with this, uh, we have a couple of really exciting panels uh, this year. Um, um, the, the announcement that I made this morning is that we have folks joining from both Google and Microsoft uh, to, um, to join a couple of panels. And I can even give you a bit of a scoop here as to who 
uh, which panels they're going to be on that I didn't mention over there. And so um, we're building up. We're building up two really cool panels. One is around AI, where uh, we managed to find the person that is that was in charge of uh, the implementation of AI within Bing, within the second largest uh, search engine uh, in the world, uh, for, by Microsoft, of course. And um, and we all know that, or a lot of us know that uh, OpenAI um, was uh, received a massive investment by Microsoft, and then they quickly implemented uh, this technology into the search. And so there's a lot of implications here for web uh, shops. One is from the search perspective, because what they did is soon to be followed by Google. I think it's it's already in beta. I see. I I was even uh, I even saw a prompt uh, just the other day to start playing with the Google version of uh, of this AI implementation inside the search. So how will that work for SEO? For the way that we build? For actually using the copy that we write on the website, feeding it back to the AI. Why is that a smart thing for us to do? Really, is that going to replace us? To some degree, so we're going to try and tackle a lot of these questions um, uh, uh, with uh, the panelists from Microsoft uh, that is joined with other folks in our space uh, that have created AI applications or or advocate for AI um, over the past a year or two years uh, or so. Um, and then the other panel, which is um, uh, also I'm really excited about is uh, something that has happened in the WordPress space mostly over the past uh, couple of years, which is you see companies from um, the broader circle of WordPress starting to take notice and starting to, to join the conversations there really in a, in a, in a pretty, um, uh, um, uh, in, in, let's, let's say they're just like dipping their toes in the water right now. But uh, I want to I want to explore this concept and why this is happening, so that as web agencies we can really start and understand what is going to be the future for WordPress in the grand scheme of things. And for that, we have panelists from Google that are taking a really active role in WordPress uh, recently. Still pretty minute, even according to the panelists, but they're they're trying to explore more ways of doing things with the platform and especially understanding that it powers almost half of the internet, right? Okay. And then uh, with him, we have folks from uh, HubSpot that literally has a WordPress department uh, within them uh, that, uh, that are doing some beautiful things uh, within the WordPress space. Uh, so we have the person that is in charge of the WordPress uh, implementation joining from HubSpot. Uh, and we have folks from Cloudfest, which is the largest event in the in the cloud space. I just came back from it uh, in Germany just the other day. And we have the person that founded the uh, Cloudfest, and he's going to talk about. Uh, uh, and, it, and they had the first WordPress day at Cloudfest, which is the largest event for hosts and uh, you know like um, a, a cloud related applications and infrastructure and all those kind of things. They literally had a dedicated day for WordPress and. We're going to explore that a little bit. And then we brought in some folks from the space itself, people that are involved in core, in creation of uh, WordPress core, as well as uh, people that are involved in creation or launched uh, WordCamps, really. Uh, so uh, we'll see that from every angle possible. And this is one of the uh, panels that I'm most excited about. Uh, even with the, so if we're going back to the first one around the AI, we have many implementations in, for web designers and web developers around this, including how does it affect uh, accessibility? And for that, we have um, a Rob from, uh, it's another Rob from uh, Master WP. Do you know him? Rob Howard, sure do. Of course. Exactly. So uh, he's really leading a lot of those AI relate or accessibility related to, relating to AI activities in the space. And that's, uh, that's, that's going to be really interesting to hear from him. And then we have Wiglot, who are uh, leading translation through AI for the past few years already. And they raised um, uh, ridiculous. So they raised about fifty million dollars just this past year. Uh, so we've heard from them before in previous events, but we can see that they are really taking this to the next level, especially with this latest raise. So we want to hear from them: How is AI affecting their day to day? How can we leverage AI translations for our web builds, for creating additional revenue for our businesses, and so on? And I, I think what um, 
people need to realize. First of all, let's start here. You're a partner in Bertha.ai with Andrew Palmer, correct? That's correct. That is. So you're already in that space. And I'm hoping some of these panels get around the fear that AI is going to cost jobs. And the reason I say that is every time we get into this AI conversation or this business moving, people say, what about jobs? Well, folks, the printing press which modernized book publishing didn't cost jobs. It just shifted them. And that's all we're doing is shifting jobs around. And people need to realize that and and keep up with the times. Because if you're in a technology business like you and I are and understand it the way you and I do, then we don't need to worry about jobs per se. Right. I was actually talking to a friend just last night around uh, exactly this concept. And um, and, uh, his is from outside the space. Um, but he had the same concerns about like, you know, we're dumbing down humanity even, you know, with the way that we're used, we, we don't think as much. We just go on and, and launch Bertha and or chat GPT and uh, we get the answer straight away. And really that's my, been, it's been my experience over the past uh, few months uh, that I, I, I go to Bertha before I even go to Google. And whenever I need to create some bit of content or need to learn something new, uh, instead of, of digging in and doing the research, I ask the AI first. And if I don't get the relevant answer, then I dig in further. But really the conversation was like, um, don't, don't you feel that this is um, making our brain redundant in that sense or that we don't need to think as much or act as much as we did before? But I see that as as uh, the beauty of it, the, the new levels of productivity that we can unlock within our days. And um, I just gave the analogy yesterday that it was, uh, you know, we just were drinking coffee and I was pointing at, at, at uh, you know, we had a glass of water on the table and I was pointing at the glass and told him, you know, back in the day, we had no glasses. You had to, you had to go and uh, go go to the to the well uh, in the in the village next next to the door and uh, and uh, actually draw some water from there and carry it with you or yeah. even even before that you just like wait for it to rain you know yeah. and so we we involve we evolve in every single even from from that small invention of a glass you know all the way to uh, to AI that is now um, allowing us to unlock new levels of productivity and convenience for all of us. I see a lot of good things about this. Of course, there's, there are some risks, which is what I'm hoping to learn from the panelists uh, that uh, um, um, uh, uh, ideally would have a lot more experience than it, in it than me. So let's get into the format of the uh, conference for a bit, a bit or the summer. Um, is it going to run? It's online. It's live. Yes. You can sign up for free. I would encourage you to sign up now and put the yes. dates on your calendar. Is it a 24 by 7 or how are we running it in terms of time? Right. So there's 10 hours a day for, uh, for t- it's Tuesday to Friday for 10 hours every day. And that usually kind of overlaps between uh, lunchtime UK all the way to when we go to sleep. And, uh, and then it matches mostly with the U.S. Uh, time zone in that sense. Then every session that is being uh, broadcast uh, has some QA uh, to it, a component to it. Then uh, really within an hour, an hour and a half, we upload the, the sessions into another section of the platform that we created for the event that has uh, replays from the past 24 hours. So if people come in uh, while we are asleep, there's still action going on. There's still people hanging around, walking around the different uh, sections of the of the platform, even into the networking lounge and hanging out with other folks uh, that are in different time zones. So the platform is open 24-7 or 24-4, really, uh, during the event. Um, um, but the sessions are going to be 10 hours of those uh, 24 hours. Yeah. And what I what I would suggest to people, if you've never done one of these summits before, is don't just go watch the sessions, but get involved in the networking lounges. The people you meet, I think the last Adoram Summit, which I spoke at, I pulled not one, but five podcast interviews just from people I met in the network lounges. Awesome. So, you know, that's the awesome part about it is you can go out, hang out with your peers, get to know some people, have those off the cuff conversations. They're great, aren't they, Vito? 
I love that. And this is one of those things that when I go to events, um, I probably catch like one or two sessions throughout the entire event. Most of my time is spent out in the hall, yeah. right? Uh, speaking to people, shaking hands, getting to know folks, creating partnerships, uh, learning from other people, just asking questions. And that is the experience that we tried to replicate in the online space uh, through the networking area. And this year, for the second year in a row, last year they did a great job with it. But this year we're even uh, um, implementing some of the lessons that we learned from last year. We have Post Status. If you heard, if you heard of uh, these guys, uh, Rob? I'm a member of Post Status. Sure do. Yes, so am I. Uh, and everyone should be, really. This is an awesome uh, uh, community for uh, for the WordPress space, for agencies, for product makers. Uh, and it's been going. It's uh, it's essentially the largest uh uh, online year-round community that uh, that exists in our space, and they do some magical stuff in there. And so, them being a community, we allow them to, or we uh, we're we're honored to have them uh, take over the uh, the networking area and create those parties. Really, is how we call them. It's like uh, it's like the, the the platform itself is essentially a venue for hire, and then you have leaders from our space. Uh, that are taking over uh, two hours here, one hour there. Um, and there's more than 30 um, uh, leaders within the space that have already uh, applied to take uh, to create those mini parties or mini hangouts or mini meetups that are happening inside that networking area uh, during the four days of the event. So there's, there's on top of the 40 sessions that we'll have, there's also 30 plus uh, uh, hours of um, of hangouts with people that uh, you probably saw on Twitter or you engage with them or you watch them or you heard them on Rob's podcast. A lot of them are going to be leading uh, these um, these uh, uh, hangout uh, areas in the in, in the networking spot that is uh, run by Post Status, and this is really cool uh, to join in and. Learn from others, really. Yeah, and I need to throw a couple of big shout outs. One is to our, our mutual good friend, Corey Miller, who runs Post Status. Yes. Thanks, Corey, for doing that. And of course, it wouldn't be worth not mentioning the, the busiest lady in WordPress who's kind of coordinating all that and is our good friend, Michelle Frechette. So, you know, Michelle. Yes, she's, she's been instrumental in, in making that happen, that area. Yeah. Uh, and uh, last year as well, but this year, Again, we're taking things like like with anything that we do, Rob. Right? We always learn and bring things to the next level uh, in the following year, and so that's the that's the beauty of doing things over time and consistently. Consistently, you can really learn from your mistakes and uh, from from the successes, and uh, double down on what worked and adjust what didn't. Yeah, and and as I said earlier, you're you're so lucky. You got two really knowledgeable co-hosts. So there's the three of you, and in Andrew and in Stephanie. I mean, they both bring a lot to the table from knowledge, from business knowledge, humor. Um, Stephanie, yes. Stephanie can crack me up at the best of times. So there, you go. <laughs> and uh, and so on. So I think we're pretty lucky in the community that way. And anybody that doesn't know the two co-hosts, follow them on Twitter, get to know them, follow Vito, get to know him, because frankly, all three are worth even knowing as colleagues and as friends. And for that, I thank have you. to say thank you. So, um, is are you going to do anything like a pre-summit uh, kickoff party, or is any of that on the works, or no? Yes. So uh, every year what we do just the day before the event uh, is we're running this live broadcast. So all the sessions are running live inside the platform, except for the pre-event uh, um, kick or the kickoff event that happens across 40-plus um, Facebook groups and Twitter channels all over the all over the community, and we actually need to um, chain things up, you know, chain uh, platforms up just to allow us to broadcast to so many uh, sources at the same time. Yep. And this is one of the cool things of, of the kickoff event because through our network and through the media partners that that also my team, uh, um, including yourself, Rob, my team has uh, uh, has has stepped up this year with folks from uh, everywhere from Ivica that you also know that has uh, more than 250,000 people across these different Facebook groups. 
um, and all the different sponsors and uh, Master WP and Post Status and Do The Woo and, uh, you know, all of those good friends that come in uh, year after year, the WP Minute and, you know, really every every, every um, um, publication that you can think of in the space is uh, joining in to make this party even grander. And so uh, during the kickoff event, we're going to try and broadcast to as many of these channels as possible uh, to make sure that all the audiences uh, know that this is uh, happening and, uh, and, um, and that they should join for the upcoming few days. Yeah, and the other, the other place we'll be promoting the event, uh, which I haven't shared with you, is the large LinkedIn group that I co-moderated. Oh, right. Yes. Uh, That's a great idea. Courtney Robertson. Um, Anybody who doesn't know, that group is just shy of 10,000. So I said before we hit the summit, we'll be over the 10,000 mark. We're in, we're within about 25 to the, to the total, but we'll get it out there as well. Um, And it's just, it's funny because LinkedIn's a bit of a different, omen is every time you post something there there'll be people that don't sit on twitter and don't sit on facebook so some of us like you and i are kind of everywhere and uh but a lot of people they kind of niche down where they hang out so that's a that's a good uh just to throw that at you um i love that so we're gonna get there um is there any beyond those couple panels is there any topic that really and ai because i know you're big into ai is there any topic that really catches your imagination right now vito uh, there's a few, really. Yes, uh, uh, one of them is another panel that uh, that uh, is going to be very cool. Is um, the future of uh, website building, yes. and uh, for that we have um, the founder of Beaver Builder and uh, the product manager from Elementor and uh, the product manager from Duda, even which is a little bit outside of our space. Uh, we have people that are in charge of the Gutenberg project, um, and uh, and and. There's a few others, uh, and, and even I think uh, we have we have uh, the founder of Stackable uh, joining us to talk about this uh, a little bit. Uh, so this is this is going to be a very exciting panel as well. And another one that I'm looking forward to is the talk by uh, Josefa, yep. who she she is the 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 lady behind WordPress. I think right is that uh, is that a good way of uh, of representing her? I hope. Yeah, she's the executive director for the WordPress project. So yeah, exactly. She she's she's essentially in charge of the entire WordPress project, and to hear from her about the future and about what uh, what is coming up, I think is going to be very interesting. Yeah, who do you have coming on from the Gutenberg project? Can I ask, or is that secret? Um, I don't, I don't remember all the names, but uh, but I do know it's one of the leaders there. Uh, there were a few that we were speaking to, trying to find who can match the the times. Uh, so I, I don't really remember who the team ended up uh, going with, but it's definitely one of the key persons there. Yeah, that's that's great. I I think that panel in itself will be enlightening. I I think, you know, it's funny we we talk about different page builders and we talk about Gutenberg and we all know the community's kind of still up in arms and split depending on who you talk to. Um, I'm not uh, anti anything. I'm kind of already there. So I'm in a bit of a different position. And I think one of the things we got to stress to our agency partners is, hey, guys, stop selling what's under the hood. Start selling what it gives your clients and the solution. I mean, because the average client really doesn't care what's under the hood anymore. I hate to tell people. So, right, and so to some to some degree, that that is uh, very correct. And then there are those larger projects where people come in with uh, a little more understanding of what is the stack that they want to implement. Uh, and yeah. in that sense, you also need to know a little bit about what is the right why choosing this tool should be the right tool for that client. And there are many options out there. And w- what we see um, generally is that within uh, website agencies and in Adderin, we have more than 12,000 agencies that are that are using the solution uh, with uh, more than 1.2 million of uh, their customers. Uh, we see that uh, essentially about 80-some percent are WordPress-focused, uh, but they still do 
projects in other um, uh, companies like uh, Shopify or other platforms like Shopify or sometimes Webflow or um, even uh, even uh, page builders like or website builders like Duda or even Squarespace for projects that that WordPress can be sometimes overkill for. Yeah. Uh, so um, it's good to understand what is the landscape in front of you because then you, you can uh, own in on where you can bring the most value to the customers while still maintaining a good level of profitability for your business. So true. Hey, Vito, it's, this has been a great conversation. Um, I would encourage anybody who wants to learn some more to sign up for the summit. Please do. How, how do they sign up, Vito? Right. So it's adarim, A-T-A-R-I-M dot I-O forward slash, for, slash, right? Forward slash summit. So adarim.io forward slash summit, and you can join there or just go to our website and you'll see a banner on the top that will direct you directly to that area. There's already thousands that have signed up uh, for this year, uh, but we're shooting for 10K, 10,000 attendees this coming year. So uh, I'd like to encourage as many as possible uh, uh, of the folks in our community to come and join the party. It's going to be incredible. And if somebody wants to reach out to you to talk about the summit, sponsorship opportunities, or anything else, how's the best way? Best way is on Twitter. Just find me, Vito Peleg, on Twitter. Is the avatar with the purple background. And uh, I'm there. So just send a message and I'll see it. Yeah. And uh, please join Vito and I at the summit. We'd uh, be loved to uh, talk to you in the networking lounge. Love you to drop in on a panel, watch a session or two. And, uh, and thanks, Vito, and have an amazing day. Thank you very much, Rob. This episode of the STM show is sponsored by Stunning Digital Marketing, the agency to handle all your WordPress website security needs. Go on over to stunningdigitalmarketing.com and find out how we can help you secure your website so you no longer have an issue with backups, being hacked, or your website being compromised. That's stunningdigitalmarketing.com. A very special thank you to Vito for joining me on this edition of the SDM Show. Thank you for listening to this edition of the SDM Show. The SDM Show is brought to you by Rob Garens and Stunning Digital Marketing. For more information about Rob Garens and Stunning Digital Marketing, go to stunningdigitalmarketing.info. From here, you can connect to us on social media, go to our website, and even go to the podcast to subscribe. This podcast is dedicated to my late father, Bruce Cairns. Dad, I miss you very much. Keep your feet on the ground. Keep reaching for the stars. Make your business succeed.